I lay covered in my favorite little mermaid blanket. She came up to me before she rushed out to work. Melly, I need you to make a mark on this paper every time you go to the restroom. She handed me a pink notebook with puppies on it. The task she asked me to complete was very peculiar. 18. 18 was the number that was so shocking to my mother. This is normal, right, Mom? I asked with a big smile on my face, not really understanding the incredible and irregular number that was. I got no response. Not a smile or even a smirk. She sighed deeply and simply walked away. This is not how my mother would have reacted normally. Had I done something wrong? My mom's reaction opened my eyes. My appearance was terrifying. I looked like a walking skeleton. The life had escaped my eyes. I had a yellow tone to my skin. My energy was simply gone. Now, my parents were rushing into the car. They started making various calls with a stress tone in each and every one of them. My father would pick up the phone, his hand barely grasping it. Tears would not stop falling. We can't believe it either. We're on our way to the hospital right now. Meet us there. What couldn't they believe? Was I really going to die? I had never experienced that kind of distress before, of wanting and not wanting to know what was going on. That was all I could really take out of the conversation. I was sent to the emergency room and was forced to stay overnight. I knew whatever was happening was serious. I had never seen so many people cry at the same time. There was a sadness to the room, one I had never experienced before. This was odd because you expected the hospital to give you life, especially if everything is fine. The sadness was contagious, but everyone was trying to hide it from the best interest of everybody else in the room. The room was big, but only one bed. White dual room with tons of beeping machines all connected to me. So many people visited me and told me I was courageous. What did that even mean? Courageous. I don't think that's what I was feeling, but everybody surely wanted me to, and so I did. I didn't cry or ask questions. I took it all in. I was so confused by the situation and the atmosphere that surrounded me. You're such a strong girl, and I'm so proud of you. My grandmother's lips trembled. With tears streaming down her face, she inhaled deeply, looked up at me, and smiled. What strength was she talking about? Was it, was it because I didn't cry when I got the needles connected to me? So many questions lingered through my mind. If I was such a strong girl, why was everybody up? Why was everybody around me so weak? It was making me mad. They were crying, but I had to keep it together. Shouldn't it be the other way around? The doctor came in, a tall, friendly-looking man. His voice was soothing, almost nurturing. His eyes were as clear as a sunny day. He brought a positive energy to the room, or so I thought. Finally. Someone's going to tell me that nothing is wrong and I can go home, I thought. After all, doctors made people feel better. And now it's my turn. The parents of Melina Huerta, he inquired with a serious tone. As I'm playing with my hair, I look up. You hang in there, kiddo. He smiles and asks my parents to step into the hall as he, talks, as he taps his hand on his clipboard. I could see the doctor's compassion towards my parents. They were both in tears, shaking and lacking strength I had always seen in them. But what had I done? Why was the situation affecting and causing so much pain to my parents? The doctor was giving them terrifying news. I could see their pain in their eyes. My mother cried in my father's arm. It was a sight I had never seen before. I was so surprised and very angry because I still had no idea what's going on. But I had to be okay with it. The people who were supposed to be the strongest are breaking down in front of me. How is this fair? Why her? I could hear my mother scream with distress. Why not me? Ma'am, it's not your fault. Don't blame yourself. The doctor patted her shoulder tenderly. Type 1 diabetes. That was the reason for the tears. For the family members rushing to the ER and being there for me. The reason for the ongoing problems. I stayed at the hospital for seven days. I was a type of medicine and procedures needed to live a normal diabetic life. Checking my glucose regularly, counting carbohydrates, and then giving the correct amount of insulin needed to keep my glucose at a steady level. 
as a preteen, wanting to live a normal life and fitting in is in everybody's agenda. I knew I had a rude awakening approaching me because I was no able longer to reach, to meet the normal standards. I was so scared of judgment and being treated dif differently. But I was never one to enjoy showing my weakness, so I made sure I smiled when my family members filled up my room. No one ever suspected the pain and uncertainty I was holding inside. I mean, they never asked. And when they did, I felt like they were asking for their inner peace. It was always implied that I was okay, and that I was this strong girl who didn't feel pain. But I wasn't. I'm not. The room was very large, white walls, and little decoration of Disney characters. Other than that, the room was pretty empty. Empty as in not welcoming. welcoming. The emptiness and lack of life haunted the room. They haunted me. I wondered how I would be treated outside the hospital walls. People, how people's perception of me would change. As I predicted, my classmates are mean. In fifth grade, I started hearing comments. Oh my god, you're diabetic? Is it contagious? It must suck having to live like you do. Your life is so sad. Slowly but surely, these comments started to break me down. I did not want to wear my parents' ones again, so I held my chin up and pretended it and pretended as I wasn't torn and weak inside. How could I ever live with myself by making my parents and family members worry about me like that once again? Flash forward six years later, age 15, things started to get very rocky. I was experiencing extremely low and high blood sugar levels. This was dangerous because it can have long-term effects. Melly, it's time for school, wake up. My dad yelled kind of one knocking on my door. School, how wonderful. I dragged my body from my bed into the bedroom, bathroom. I felt funny that day as I woke up, but I didn't think much of it. I went to the bathroom. It was a cold morning. I go on and grab my black hair straightener. As I pick it up, my head starts feeling really heavy. Bam! I wake up in the hospital bed. I see my mom crying next to me. Melly, how are you? Are you feeling okay? She asked anxiously. I thought about it. As I go to speak, I felt a huge barrier that was inside my mouth impeding me from speaking. Wonderful. Here we go again. I'm going to be causing all my family so much pain. How are you doing, Melly? The doctor asked. Asked. Looking confused due to, the, to my inability to speak, he continues. What you're experiencing is an aftershock of hyper, hyper, hyperglycemia, which is severe low blood glucose that caused you to seizure. Although we are unsure of the lack of speech, we'll run some tests up and get that figured out. Do you understand? I nod my head yes, but I didn't understand. My family starts coming in groups of five, and once again, they tell me that they're proud of me for being so strong. But they never asked me how I felt. They just assumed I was okay with everything that was going on. I have yet to understand where they think the strength is coming from. The only strong feeling I had was a pain from my left ear, but my head hit the sink. For many years, I've been looked at as a girl who goes through so much and complains so little. But I think, I think of the countless times my true feelings have been avoided by those who surround me. Real, have they really asked me what I felt versus, have really asked me what I felt versus asked me how they wanted me to feel? Life has handed me many obstacles. I have taken each and every one of them on. But that doesn't mean I'm handling them well. Lately, I have learned that it's okay not to be okay right now.